Cannabis Health Radio, I'm Ian Jessup. And I'm Corey Elland. Three out of every 1,000 people in Europe and North America suffer from Crohn's disease. It's a type of inflammatory bowel disease that may affect any part of the gastrointestinal tract from mouth to anus. Signs and symptoms often include abdominal pain, diarrhea, which may be bloody if inflammation is severe, fever and weight loss. And children with Crohn's disease experience even further problems, growth failure, malnutrition, delay in puberty, and bone demineralization. And joining us to talk about her little girl's Crohn's is Nina from the United States. Uh, We don't want to use her real name, so we'll refer to her as Nina. Nina, thanks for doing this. When did you first notice that your daughter was having bowel issues? Around the age of two, uh... I started to notice that, you know, she was not like my other two children. Something was going on here. So we continued to see doctors, and no one wanted to listen to us because she was so young. She's not your textbook case. When they said that she's not your textbook case, meaning what does that mean? In your medical textbooks, you're going to see from 15 years old on up is a typical age for diagnosis. So because she was two, they felt that she didn't have it. She was just a child going to the bathroom. Correct. At what age was she diagnosed? Four. And what treatment options were offered? Chemotherapy, um, which I was not okay with. Um, No no one in our family was okay with it. Um, But then we were given... Um, medications by mouth, which I did approve of, but not knowing that she was receiving chemo by tablet. Oh, so the tablets they were giving her for her Crohn's were actually chemo. Correct. Wow. I've never heard of chemo for Crohn's. Have you, Corey? No. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. (laughs) How did she react to the medications, Nina? Um... By the time she got diagnosed, her disease was so aggressive that, you know, they wanted to go in with treatment aggressively. So when we started with uh, medications by mouth, it took a while, um, about six weeks to start noticing any difference. At that time, the doctor was still uh, pushing for chemo through infusions, which, again, we uh, refused. So we continued with the treatment that we had already agreed on and she did okay for a while um and then things started going downhill again so her her case is is very aggressive um to the point where she had abscesses anal abscesses also uh the latest was a skin tag that was about the size of a half dollar nina what um symptoms was she exhibiting when she was four and was finally diagnosed She was vomiting all the time, diarrhea all the time. It was hurting her to use the restroom. So at that point, she had developed um, the anal abscesses, and it was excruciating for her. And because no one knew what to do with her, basically I had to drain those myself. I can't even imagine, you know, having had uh, anal cancer. I know what that felt like, but this just must have been absolutely horrific. You had to be a nurse. Yes. What was a typical day like for your daughter? Uh, Excruciating pain, laying down a lot, um, fevers. She had a fever every day. Um, And no one could tell me what virus, what uh, presents itself like Crohn's disease, because that's what they kept giving me. Well, it's a virus. Well, okay, well, what, what virus presents itself like Crohn's disease? And no one would give me an answer to that question. Did you have a gut feeling that it was Crohn's disease before she was diagnosed? Absolutely. I mentioned it to the doctors. Every doctor that I would take her to see, whether it was in urgent care, whether it was in the emergency room, whether it was her regular pediatrician, I brought it up. And their response was? She's too young. Too young. They just didn't want to even proceed with it because they felt as a result of what they learned in a textbook, that she was too young. Correct. I also got a response from a doctor, which was a lot of parents are now using Google 
to diagnose their children. Maybe so, the, maybe the doctor should have done that as well. <laughs> I think we would have had a, <laughs> correct. I think we would have had a resolution a long time ago. Now, are there any food triggers that cause your daughter problems? At this point, we have not seen that. What I think is that we have not had a good treatment um, in the past that will control her Crohn's disease until now. Nina, did she miss a lot of school? Absolutely. This year, um, this last school year, she missed the last three months of school. And that makes it, I'm sure, really hard for her to have a social life or anything like that as well. And, you know, some kids don't like being at school. That's not my child. She wants to go. She wants to learn. She wants to be with her friends. She wants to participate. And it's sad when they can't participate in everyday things that other children are doing. I think what would be really hard as a parent would be watching your child in agony and not being able to do anything about it. That would really get to me. It, it is bad because you almost feel a sense of guilt because um, you're like a bystander with and, your hands tied. Yeah, feeling hopeless. Yes. Or helpless or whatever, both. When she was in school, did she have any friends? She does. She has a nice amount of friends. <laughs> yes. I'm just wondering, because of the isolation as a result of her Crohn's, I'm wondering if if other kids uh, shied away from her as a result of that. Um, No, I, we've made it um, to where her teachers are aware and the school is aware, but she doesn't share it with her friends. And we had this conversation, and it's the reason behind it is a lot of children can be very mean. We don't want that to affect her at school. No. No, of course not. Tell us how you came about using cannabis. Okay, so when my daughter got diagnosed, I had already been looking into watching documentaries, uh, reading a lot of articles on the internet. Um, at that moment in time, and I had shared this with Corey, I thought to myself, this would be great for when my daughter turns 18. Um, so I wasn't fully educated yet, although I thought I was. <laughs> um, once I learned that if you do an equal amount, you know, your child will not have a euphoric effect off of it. Um, I was ready to, to start treatment. Um, watching my daughter in pain and uh, miserable, basically, is, is where she was at. And it affects everyone. We decided that this is something that we're going to do. So take us through what you did the very first time. As far as dosing or... Yeah, dosing and how, how she reacted to yeah, it. Yeah, we had a conversation. Um, yes, I spoke with Corey. Um, after speaking with Corey, I spoke with a lot of other parents that are using cannabis and um, kind of used them as a guide um, so they can tell me kind of what they're doing and, and so I can kind of follow so what I did is once I had um, access to the oils, I came home. Oh, she was in the hospital, actually, when I um, finally had access. So when she came home, I told the doctor we weren't doing chemo, no more chemo. We, we need to bring her home and, and give her a few days on some antibiotics and see where she's at. So I brought her home. Two days later after starting, she felt amazing. So what I did with the oil is I diluted it. For myself, I found that that would be easier to dose her that way. So I have an exact amount to go by every single time that I give her a dose. So what I did is I took a, one syringe of the oil and I added nine syringes of coconut oil, which is also very good for you. That's how I made the medicine. Um, and I started by doing 0.25, I would pull that up into a syringe, put it into a capsule, close the capsule, and give it to her. Um, after two weeks, I went up, and now we're doing 0.5 inside the capsule three times a day. And what are some of the changes you've noticed? She is very happy. She, um, Like I stated before, in two days, she was pain-free. Pain-free. 
Now we're talking a child that just got out of the hospital that was on morphine. What a relief for both of you. Absolutely. She feels more energy. She is happy. She can't wait to go back to school now and see her friends. Her um, lab results came back pretty good. Um, Inflammation markers are down. And um, the doctor says, whatever you're doing, keep doing. Um, She had a skin tag that was, like I said, um, about the size of a half dollar. I applied oil on it in the evenings um, before she went to bed so that I knew that it would stay in place until the next day. So um, give more time for the medicine to do its job. Um, Her skin tag reduced by 90% is what the doctor told me. How long did that take? One month. Great. Yes. Something that I was told will never happen unless I am on, or unless she is on chemo. Um, It will not go down any without the chemo. And voila, 90% gone. 90%, yes. Chemo for a skin tag, I mean, it's just, it, it's nonsense. I've had skin tags before, and what the doctor has done is simply freeze it, cut it off, put a Band-Aid on, and, and I'm out the door in 10 minutes. But to suggest that I take chemo is, I just don't understand it. Well... I've also realized that um, with chemo is big business, big money. Um, you know, that uh, a lot of people don't know this, and they should know this. Doctors are getting a commission yeah. from chemo. Yes, they are. It's the um, only drugs that they get a commission on, and they get a whopping commission every time they write a prescription for chemotherapy. Now, the chemo that my daughter would have to be on it was explained to me as she could never come off of it. What? So, yeah, never for life. Uh, the way the doctor explained it to me is it's a commitment kind of like a marriage. And I said, well, not really because you can actually get a divorce in a marriage. <laughs> and I'm not ready to have my daughter married. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, good, so, good decision, Nina. Boy, that is... Uh, the hair on my arms is standing up. I can't imagine telling a parent of a nine-year-old that they're going to have to be on chemotherapy for the rest of their life. Doctors have really become salespeople for the chemotherapy drugs that they're prescribing. I mean, it's crazy. It is. Um, I stumbled across a website the other day stating uh, where you can actually put your doctor's name in and see how much money they're actually making off these drugs that they are prescribing. And when it comes down to your, in my case, my child, and in other people's case, someone they love has become a number, that's really disappointing and upsetting in, um, in the vow that they took to not do any harm. Nina, when you gave your daughter the very first dose of cannabis, were you just kind of a little apprehensive about uh, what may happen? By the time that I was ready and we were going to do this and there was no turning back, um, I was a little bit, I wouldn't say concerned, but more like um, my concern was I'm really starting this kind of late in the game. Um, Am I going to get the results that I need in the time frame that the doctor is going to allow me? Um, Because when they say hey, you have to do this, and, and and you refuse, and you keep refusing, you know, it comes down to a point where they they kind of start threatening you and say, okay, well, if you don't do this, then you're not complying with treatment, and, and then you're looking for more problems at that point. So I kind of waited too long, I felt, at that point. But no, everything came out what I expected. Um I expected her to feel better. I expected her to smile. I I thought she would be tired a lot um, in the beginning, and she wasn't. Um, She did sleep a lot prior to, and she actually started getting up and moving around and playing. And, um, you know, she loves to dance. So within a few days, she was up dancing. And it was something I hadn't seen her do in months. It's her favorite thing to do. Um, so it brought joy to everyone to watch her dance. 
Has her bowel habits returned to normal, or have her bowel habits returned to normal? Yes, they have. It's not something we like to speak about publicly, but... Yeah, I mean, mean, obviously that's part of this disease. Yeah, if you have uh, Crohn's disease, which can be extremely painful, the people we've talked to, I mean, uh, they're just writhing in pain constantly. And some of the people, even with intestinal bowel issues, maybe not as severe as Crohn's, the very first thing they're always aware of when they go out is where's the bathroom? You have to know where the bathroom is. Exactly. And for us, you know, when she's doing good we don't think about it as much but when she's doing bad i mean even a trip to the grocery store is is pushing the limits you know um because i don't know how she's going to feel i don't know when you know that sense of urgency is is going to come up and um it's hard for a child too just in the middle of any kind of activity that you're doing it just can go downhill so yeah, it is rough. I and I my heart goes out to everyone with this this disease and there's even some parents that not only have just one child, but they have a second child being diagnosed and and it's hard. Now, you obviously talk to other parents who have uh, children with Crohn's disease. Have they gone with chemotherapy as well? Yes. Yes, a lot of people, a lot of parents have and, um, you know, I almost did, too. Right there with this last hospital visit, I felt desperate. I was watching her in so much pain, and I thought to myself, you know what? I'm just going to put my hands up and give in. And then I thought about it before the doctor made it back, and I said, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm going to try the oil, and I'm going to give it a chance to to do its thing. And and I'm so happy I didn't go down that road. Um Some parents, for them, it works. Um, For myself, I don't feel like I want to poison my daughter's body any further. And are the doctors aware of what you're doing with your child in terms of cannabis? Her cannabis doctor is aware, but her GI specialist is not as of yet. Um, So we're about six weeks in. So my hope is to get her into remission within the next month or two, and then I would sit down with the doctor and have a conversation with him. Now, it's not I'm trying to hide information from my doctor. The problem is is her GI specialist is not um, educated when it comes to cannabis. Um, So I guess I would feel more comfortable once we have the exact results that we're looking for to share that information. Nina, when we were talking yesterday, you were saying that uh, your daughter said to you she wants to get off all of her medication and just do oil. Correct. Is she still on all of the other meds? She is currently um, still on the chemo tablet, and we're currently weaning off of um, steroids. Every time we wean off steroids, we have we go downhill. This time has been completely different. And she's on prednisone, correct? Correct. Yeah, you can feel so gross on prednisone, just gross. When you say she goes downhill, what? what uh, explain what you mean by that. Um, as as your body, uh, the as you're weaning off the steroids, her body starts showing symptoms like really fast and it happens so fast and so what we tend to do is go back and bump the steroids again and then we start weaning again so um it's never been a good outcome weaning off the steroids but this time is different we're not seeing any anything negative at all in the lab results in her demeanor in her body in her stools, nothing is is showing that we need to be concerned. Well, that's really encouraging. You've got a happy child now. Her thing is, when I ask her, how do you feel? Before she'd say, okay, and I don't feel so good. And now when you ask her, she says, I feel amazing. You can't ask for more. You just can't. Yeah, I know, because her normal was probably feeling bad. That was, that her, was her normal. That was her yeah. normal, yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, now that she feels normal as a normal person would, 
She feels fantastic. Fantastic, yeah. Yes, amazing. For her words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Feels amazing. How do you feel now that you know you've you're on she's on the road to recovery? I'm gonna tell you that the feeling that I feel as a parent is um and I spoke with Corey about this yesterday. I cry. I've cried in the past, I cry currently. The only difference is the emotions behind the tears are so different. Um, before it was desperation, fear, um, you know, the feeling sorry for her. Now I cry the happy tears. And um, it's a sense of relief. Um, I wish I could explain it so much more. It's freeing. It's um, just to watch her be happy, you know, as a parent. Anyone that's a parent understands that. If you see your child smiling, makes you smile. So that in itself, it's so rewarding. Um, being able to speak to other parents, being able to share our experience, uh, all that has been truly amazing for us. Nina, you mentioned that you're um, a- an admin on a Facebook group. Did you want to say what group that was and what the group is about? Yes. The group Parent Support for cannabis and IBD. So I encourage anyone that is a parent that is either looking for information or has information to share to come join us. Um, We're a very small group right now. And whether you have a question, if one of us can't answer it, we'll try to get the answers for you from someone else. Um, If you have information, you're making your own oils and you can give a recipe to the parents that don't have access, that information is helpful. So we encourage any parent. And and here's another thing besides just the Crohn's disease. A lot of us get sick from one day to the next. I also encourage people to join any cannabis group that has, you know, if they have questions, if they think that maybe sometime later in life this is something they might want to want to do. Or I encourage everyone to be informed to be very informed on the medications you are taking and to be very informed on cannabis and what it can do. Ask your questions now. What has this done for your life, Nita, in terms of the way it's changed it and taken you in a different direction? It's changed my life as in many different ways. Um, I've met some amazing people. My daughter's health is obviously doing way better and and we're expecting um like i said i've met some amazing people and what you're going to notice in in the cannabis um groups and family or world whatever people want to consider it as there's some really amazing people there's some really generous people whether it's with information um you know being there to support you having a conversation with you all these people are willing to, to help in one way or another. And I've made some really great friends. I've met some really great people. There's still people I'd like to meet. Um, Corey. <laughs> oh, thank you. So, it's, it's been a blessing. It's been a blessing. And I've met some amazing people and I've been blessed. And so has Imadi very much so. So. You know, it was great of you to do this, and I've got to give your uh, your kids credit because you're doing this in a car because you couldn't get the signal in the house, and your kids are in the car, and they've been very quiet they've and been attentive. Extremely quiet. Did you load them up on cannabis before you did the interview? No, no. <laughs> do, do they want to say hi? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, this is this is Imari. Say hi. 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 And we have Lewis. Hello. Hi. Hi. And we have Kaylani. <laughs> Hi. Hi. No, that was great, uh, Nina. We very much appreciate it. Anything you would uh, like to say in conclusion? Um, we pretty much covered. We covered everything. Every- yes. Yeah, we did. It was good of you to do this, and we wish you all the best in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Nina, thanks so much for doing this and uh, sharing your story. And I'm delighted that things are changing as fast as they are and going so well. And you know that you can contact me anytime if you need some more help. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay.
You have a good night. Oh, or does somebody day. have a question? She says she thought you were going to ask her a question. We can ask you, her a question, absolutely. Okay. We'll ask you a question. How, do, how are you feeling? Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. So do you like this new medicine? Yeah. Yeah. You feel a lot better? Mm-hmm. I hear you like to dance. Yeah. <laughs> are you going to go in and dance now? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thanks very much. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. 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 And don't forget, there are a number of ways you can help us here at Cannabis Health Radio. You can write a review on Apple iTunes and also on Stitcher. Write a review of what you think about Cannabis Health Radio. And you can also make a donation to Cannabis Health Radio so we can continue doing these podcasts. Go to our website, CannabisHealthRadio.com. Go to the donate page and make a contribution. You can make a contribution for as little as $3 a month. That's about the price of a cup of coffee. $3 a month. So we can continue bringing these interviews to you on Cannabis Health Radio. Wherever you are in the world, thanks very much for listening. You've been listening to the Cannabis Health Radio podcast. Visit our website, CannabisHealthRadio.com, and follow us on Facebook and Twitter.